And if you only have one blessing, one blessing alone, that you are covered by the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, you have no reason for discontentment, and you have every reason to stay far from sin. The truth is, though, you and I, just like Israel, have been shown much more grace than that. And all I will say on that point is don't take his love and grace and kindness for granted. But they knew not that I healed them. But God commendeth, that is, demonstrates his own love toward us, in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Romans 5.8 If you wanted to bring that text and import it into Hosea, you might say, while we were yet gomers, Christ died for us. And for your ongoing meditation in this, because I think we we read over the text, it it should stagger us enough just to hear that in Romans 5.8. But an overlooked portion of Romans 5.8 is the ongoing tense of the verb translated demonstrates or commendeth. What the Lord is saying is it wasn't a once only demonstration on the cross. He doesn't say God demonstrated his own love for us. He says God demonstrates. Even today then, friend, the cross is the demonstration that you need minute by minute, hour by hour, the love of God. When you meditate on the cross, and we did that in Galatians 6 a bit, when you meditate on the cross, well, first meditate on it often, but you must never forget what it signifies. It signifies forgiveness, it portends mercy, and it displays the love of God. You forget it, I forget it, and so Romans 5.8 says, this is an ongoing demonstration to you, believer, of the love of God. It did not end on the minute that Christ died on that cross. But it continues into eternity. Now we need God to be who he is. The one who says, because I, the Lord, do not change. You are not consumed, you sons of Jacob. Because his love and commitment to us does not change. We are not consumed. It's not my faithfulness. But it is his commitment and his faithfulness. And how we need him to be like that. Because we are prone to what in this text? We are prone to backslide. We are bent on backsliding and we are prone to commit harlotry. What would your life be like, friend? If you feared each day would be your last because you provoked God in your sin and you feared he might fly off the handle. Thanks be to God. That he is committed to us and he is without passions like a man. Now does that mean that we can sin with impunity? Absolutely not. You know, to sin with impunity, believing that that is okay in God's eyes and he will not destroy you. It really might mean that you are not a true believer at all. You might be an apostate. So don't ever think that God's merciful nature is a license to sin. And you might find very quickly that you were never one of his people and you must repent quickly of your sin. But if you are truly his, he will chastise you for your sin and you will face consequences for it. He does not condemn the elect, but he does chastise them. Look at verses five and six. He shall not return into the land of Egypt, but the Assyrian shall be his king because they refuse to return. And the sword shall abide on his cities. And shall consume his branches and devour them because of their own counsels. When you consider the love you have of sin in your fallen nature, will your sin, ask yourself the question, will your sin or will the world that you chase so much lay down its life for you? Sin will deceive you and it wants to murder you. The world abuses you and forsakes you. But Christ laid down his life. For you to live. And having suffered tonight. He calls each of you to faith and repentance. He calls the backslidden. To turn back to God. He tells the apostate return to God. And he says to the unbeliever. Turn to God. And find the love of God in me. And so you are called to have a holy kind of trembling. To know that the Lord is merciful in Christ. That out of Egypt he has called his son to be our substitute. 
And that is meant to have you turn back to him. In this chapter, friends, have you not seen the heart of the God who cries out saying, I have no pleasure in the death of the wicked, but that the wicked should turn from his way and live. He says, turn, turn from your evil ways. For why should you die, O house of Israel? In a way, that question is more poignant with Romans 5 verse 8. Why should you die when I made my son die? And you can have the mercy of Christ. There is no reason for you to die in your sin. Not with Christ portrayed before you tonight. All you have to do is believe on him. And if you have felt the weight and guilt and burden of your sin, turn from your evil ways and live. Flee to Christ. That is why the Lord sent him to be our substitute. For if righteousness could come by works of the law, then Christ died for nothing. My heart is greatly stirred, I sing a noble theme. My tongue's a skillful writer's pen to speak about the King.